All right. So you saw the title and you click. You're probably wondering, what am I talking about? Well, no surprise here. I am talking about the parry system in Withering Waves. Frankly speaking, I believe it's absolutely unfair. As the system is not uniformed, so it doesn't perform the same way with different weapon archetypes. It doesn't even perform the same with different characters. There's a lot of things to do with the system, such as animation reset, animation duration, for example. There's also problems to do with weapon having dead zone in where you literally cannot parry at all or certain time of directional attack doesn't parry. Frankly speaking, you would expect the most basic attack is what is used the majority of time to utilize the system, but that's not the case. It is very, very different based on different weapon archetype, based on different character. So we run into a problem where different characters will have a different experience. And this majority of the time, it comes down to the difficulty of the content. If you are more effective at parrying attack, you're able to do more damage and you're able to take less damage. You need less time and less effort to actually do something. Because once again, if you parry an attack, you have an uninterrupted period where you just do damage. But if you don't parry attack, your enemy will constantly assault you. And in this game, enemies are hyper aggressive, which requires you to Victory parry their lost. attacks to disable them for that short period of time, which allows you to essentially do more damage and eventually break their bar, putting them in a down state. And when they're in a down state, they just stay there and they take more damage. That if you're using a character which can't effectively parry, you have a harder time is getting that down state and a harder time in actually doing damage. And I want to talk about this particular issue again because it is an issue as you are going to roll for these characters. And then if you roll for these characters, right, you have to worry about whether or not this character cannot perform properly to do the contents in the game. And this is the issue that we have come up to at this point. Characters are incapable of doing a lot of the content in the game. And it's not impossible for them to do it. It's just atrociously harder. And this is completely, absolutely unfair, right? But anyways, before we get into the more nitty gritty of this, please hit the subscribe, a like or a dislike. I like both of those. So yeah. Let's go. All right, we started off with Gion, incoming hit at an angle. I know I wouldn't have been able to counter that, so I just take the hit. Now, frankly, broadsword are pretty good at countering. Not too much problem here. Your animation tends to be on the longer side, so if you're actually actively doing something else, like you're effectiveness at countering fast attack becomes a lot harder if you're not actually occupied then you can successfully counter almost every single hit so it's pretty good not too much complaining with it you just have to be a bit more attentive and i'm not really trying harding like you know i'm just trying to go like what the average person would actually parry so yeah not really just just being easy on it because this is mostly to do with you know the average player you know the hardcore will adapt and is able to do whatever so yeah all right gian again this time we're going to be looking for the opportunities to attack so we're not going to be just standing one place we're just going to look for the opportunity to mostly normal attack and then trying to counter within that uh, once again I'm not trying to go, you know, absolutely perfect. I'm just trying to be average in my demonstration. You know, most players just simply not that hardcore. So pretty good. 
Okay, right. Well, that's an angle. Angle is a problem. Man, right, this was pretty, pretty clean. No problem. Doable with broadsword. All right, it's Yinlin time. So, Yinlin can, you know, parry, counter, you know, whichever term you like to use, uh, at a reasonably good rate. She's not all that reliable, but I believe she is somewhat capable. Right. So that, what you just saw there, that is a dead zone, right? That is a dead zone where the enemy is generally too close, right, to you. And so your counter doesn't actually work because there is a dead zone between where you are and where the attack is actually coming from. So that is an issue. It didn't work either. And this is a reoccurring thing. You will actually see is there, there's a lot of dead zone. So while she can counter, it is not very reliable. But she's able to counter, right? She's just unreliable. That's the issue. Go again. So if the attack is essentially coming head on to you, you can you can counter it. You know, sometimes you have to be a bit more preemptive with your counter because she has to swing on the drawn out animation. Right? When they're really close, it just doesn't go off. If they descend from an angle, it's just very problematic. Time to do all of that with Encore. I believe everybody already know what's going to happen. Encore just <laughs> cannot counter. You know, it's not like it never actually happens. The chance of it happening is extremely low. And that's because Encore attack generally doesn't come from the direction of the, char the character, but generally spawns on the target she's attacking. And counter is generally triggered on oncoming attack so the direction of the attack is very important and some weapon archetype or attack pattern of the characters simply doesn't bones well with this because even if you're on a slight angle a lot of times you just won't encounter anything you'll just totally miss so encore spawning or attacks on the target generally is filled with a huge amount of dead zone you probably know when she oats up, it's totally different. She's able to counter because her attacks at that point is coming from frontals. She can count. See? That's a, that's a very lucky one, right? So it is possible, but she has way too much dead zone and it's just bad. And she's gone. All right, dungeon time. I'm gonna be very clear. The effort, what it took me to counter these attacks are way less than every other character I showed you. Even for Encore, getting hit, attempting to parry, you know, these attacks took more effort. And I, I know I was gonna get hit. The angle that I can parry from and the quickness I can parry from with Dungeon is absolutely ridiculous. So, it requires minimum effort. You, if you play the game, you should know that the first time when you're using MC, which operates their normal and their, their you know their countering capability, is very much so like dungeon. And when you're fighting, you know, crownless, you could just continue to hit the normal attack button, and you will have like a ninety percent success when it comes to countering. So yeah, this easy, no effort really, literally a cheat code. All right. Dungeon 2. Uh, this time we are gonna normal attack, do some skills, you know, actually somewhat fight the enemy. And you will notice, once again, I am not trying harder. I am putting in less effort here to do these counters, right? So that's something to keep in mind because I want to keep it at a rate where, you know, 
the casual player plays the game and how I play the game when I don't really care. I just want the rewards. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to win some kind of reward or anything like that. All right. So most of this is just, just smashing, you know, the attack with these counter, right? I am not doing anything special, minimum effort. It's just the game and its counter parry system is designed and built around this kind of, you know, sword user. And it's not really balanced, you know, are compensated when it comes to everybody else. It's, that's just how it is, right? And it's just unfair, extremely unfair. It's very imbalanced. You no, know, you shouldn't design a game that way, right? Especially if you're doing the same amount of money if you're paying for characters. So here you are, minimum effort. Well, welcome to my very um, questionable graphs, but hopefully this will be able to illustrate some of what I am trying to demonstrate and talk about here. And yeah, anyways, the most important thing is dead zones and animation resets. Animation resets is generally to do with animation speed or the length of an animation and how much idle time there is to get back to a neutral state that you need to be in a neutral state. So when the parry attack is coming, you will actually get a confirm hit. You need a confirm hit to get parry to work. If the target is coming at an angle, as you can see, your incoming attack, right? If you're coming from a different angle, it's harder to get a confirm hit. If they're coming straight on, and you've seen this in the video demonstrating, it's a lot more easier to get a confirm hit. And the good news is, if you're gonna get back to a neutral state, you'll be able to move so you are able to more directly influence how and when you're gonna get those parries because you know you can either be in the way of the parry or not. So it's very important for those confirm it. And in this game, apparently just kind of slightly being off angle from the incoming attack, will you, you're gonna miss that confirm hit and, and that is a problem. Next thing you have the type of weapon. So broadsword are actually pretty good. I think they have a reasonably good speed. As long as the character doesn't have really drawn out animation, you should do pretty well with broadsword. Jian is pretty good at countering. His animations can be a little bit long, so they don't reset fast enough. So if you're really active and doing stuff with him, right, and you're fighting something like, you know, the Memphis, they might come in on you way too fast for him to actually react because his animation is just simply not finished. And thus, you're not going to get that confirm hit for that parry. And that is a problem. But it's fast enough and it has no dead zone. As long as you are in the direction of the oncoming attack and you're able to press the key to get that confirm hit, you will get a successful parry. So it's reasonable, okay? But yeah. Next, we're generally looking at Rectifier like Yin Lin you'll notice that Yin Lin generally attacks in an arc in which she sweeps, and these sweeps have really long drawn on animation. That means they are slower animations and they stay there for a while, so they take a longer time to reset. This is why kind of like trying to parry with her is possible as demonstrated, but they're not really reliable. Furthermore, she has a huge dead zone because her attack is essentially spawning a distance away from her. If the enemy is close enough to you, you're just not going to parry, <laughs> right? You're just not going to parry, especially when you're actually doing other things within that time and the anime out animation is going on. And you'll see that where the, you know, he's in the Memphis went in the air and then he, you know, I dodged that and he came back down and I did, did the input, but it didn't actually work. I assume there is a time to actually get it, but the window is either very short or it could possibly be because it, it simply doesn't work when they're actually that close. That would need more testing, but you see that huge amount of dead zones, very long animations and stuff like that. Even our skills and our ultimate have a long lingering animation, which kind of locks you there and you're unable to do anything, which is, it's just way too slow and unfortunately, that's the situation we have. Now, characters like Encore, and you should probably see this as a rectifier thing going on. 
And I want to talk about more about that a little later. But Ancor generally cannot counter with her normal. She can counter when she ults. And the reason for that is that, as you already, as I already said, oncoming attack, right? When it, you need to be in the oncoming counterable attack for it to work to get a confirmed hit. If you're off an angle, it's not really going to work the majority of the time. I think the only weapon where it really works if you're kind of off filter from where the attack is coming is actually the sword. I don't know what's up with the sword, but that seems to be the case the majority of time. The sword is just ridiculous, and we'll get to that. However, once again, Encore can't really do anything or counter with her normal, simply because they're not really coming from the character yourself. They are actually spawning on the enemy, in which the majority of hits are simply not coming from the direction that is necessary to counter the actual attack. It can happen, and as you see, it did happen, and right, it did happen, but the likelihood is extremely low, and this leaves her with an incredible amount of dead zone, and dead zones are pretty much the area which you will not be able to counter. These are just dead zones. If the counter is happening and they pass this threshold, you're gonna get hit. Furthermore, she has very long animations, and so she doesn't really get enough and you know reset time they're not fast enough for you to really do that input and get that confirm hit right to get that confirm and get that happening it just doesn't happen and yeah that's where we have if if they continue this trend with rectifier i don't know you're probably not gonna want to really roll them when enough characters are you know in the game all right sword sword is simple you probably noticed this that you kind of can just button smash, okay? No skills necessary, you can just button smash. When you start the game and you are using Rover and you're fighting Crownless, you should notice that if you simply keep spamming the normal attack, when you're fighting Crownless, you will have around a 90% confirm countering rate, right? No skills necessary. Why they did this is probably because they spend most time balancing the game around the sword, especially when to deal with stuff like, you know, to kind of really draw you in, and obviously Rover uses sword, but seemed to be way more time was spent doing the sword. It's extremely, it's extremely fast, incredible reset, no dead zone, and it seems to be, it's counter, like art, seems to be much wider than you would think it is, because once again, when I was doing dungeon, I wasn't doing anything special. I was just straight up, you know, just kind of smashing the button and it just went out. It just it just worked. So yeah. Anyways, hopefully this graph illustrates some of my point. Let's move on. All right. So with all of that out of the way, hopefully I was able to illustrate my point about the system. But let's just talk a little bit about dungeon. So why people dungeon? Well, this is very simple. She is simple. She is simple and simple is a good thing in this game. As drama animations or things what keeps you occupied is a detrimental to your overall performance. In reality, you want to do your damage as swiftly as possible. While she is not the best damage in the game, she is able to do her damage extremely swiftly without any drawn out effect to it. When she holds, it's just a very simple cut in and she just does that damage very quickly and you can immediately continue the previous motions that you were actually doing. Her swings are very clean and don't really requires you to constantly do like a heavy charge. Like for example, Sanha, right? You can just simply do her three strikes very quickly. And these have really good cross. So they have a huge, huge percentage chance of actually triggering your parry, even if the enemy is at an angle. In other words, she is kind of a, cheat code right it appears that the game might have been balanced around swords 
So other weapon types kind of took a back burner, for example, and they probably never got around to doing anything about that. And that leads me into, well, this is weird. Obviously, if you have such a system, then there should be some form of compensation for, you know, the differences in performance between archetypes, character. But there isn't any compensation. There isn't any compensation at all. And this is the, the weirdest thing. You would think maybe rectifier users or characters who have a much more difficult time in pairing would have some kind of enhanced dodge or something like that. But there is just nothing. It's very bare bone. And the issue is obviously glaring. It, it is actually quite surprising to me. It's like they were going the distance and somehow they kind of stopped because there should be some kind of compensation. And I honestly think they should add it in. But is that going to happen? I very doubt it. It is most likely going to be this way forever. But I just want to point out that it is an issue. Range characters, and I talk about that, range character are not an advantage in this game. A range character is actually a disadvantage. If you use a gun or a rectifier, you are actually at a disadvantage. In most games, range comes with the ability to maybe not, let's say, parry, for example, or they have lower defense or lower life than other character, but they come with the advantage of being ranged. You're, they're able to see an attack coming at a greater distance and actually do something about those attacks. But in Withering Wave, that's unfortunately not the case, as all the enemies that you fight are super aggressive. Furthermore, they're teleporting on you, teleporting behind you, and they all have rush attack. This makes being a range useless. You cannot zone and you, you cannot do anything. You're simply stuck with the disadvantage of not using a sword type weapon or some kind of melee weapon because every single enemy, well, I guess not every, the turtle doesn't really do that. Fine right but almost every single enemy in the game has a rush some just straight up have a teleportation where they just teleport behind you so there is literally no advantage of being arranged it's literally decremental to your overall performance to play range character because there isn't any compensation in the system to deal with the huge gap the huge disadvantage that they have versus a melee character. And like I said, that is absolutely unfair and just absolutely ridiculous. Con considering that you are gonna be paying money, a lot of people using your resources to roll for these characters, right? And then you can't really use them like you can use other character. This is not a issue with power or utility. This is an issue with a fundamental system in the game, which has a huge performance gap between character to character. And there is nothing in the game that compensates for that. And that is a problem. Frankly, it just kind of make the game combat feel cheap. It cheapened the experience. Because in a gacha game, when you roll for a character, you generally expect that they will perform the most basic systems in the game at an appropriate rate. And that's not what we're seeing or experiencing in the game. Like I said, I doubt they will ever fix it, but I just wanted to just bring this up, just, you know, try to illustrate it the best I can and, you know, talk about it. Hopefully maybe people would care and you know the dev might listen right and they might put in a compensation system because i doubt they're ever really going to be able to change the archetype for the weapons that's probably too ingrained in the system right now but maybe just maybe they would have some kind of compensation with future characters or you know patch it into the older characters but 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's all I really have to say. Once again, you know, subscribe and follow me on Twitter down in the description. You know, hit like, dislike. Like I said, I like either of those. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say with this. And I will see you in another one.